Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor and welcome to another painting video. I am very excited to share with you this video because this is one of my favorite painting recently. I was in an art show very recently and while I have some of the work that's already ready to display, I also want to paint some new work to be part of the art show. So I painted two new painting one of the painting is this one, the frozen pond. The other one is a dead tree with snow covered on top. And out of the two, I like this one the most just because the simplicity and the mood of it. And I have to admit that this is hugely inspired by watercolor master Andrew Wyeth. Now I have to apologize because I didn't hit the record button when I was painting the first wash, so I have to skip that. However, the first wash is pretty much just the basic light and the basic atmosphere of it. I use masking fluid for this specific painting with masking fluid pen because I really need to preserve some light for those very thin, delicate trees in the background against the dark. So that's why I do it. So this is actually the second wash. I pre-wetted the surface and I just paint the background in. Now, even though it's second wash, I still don't want a very sharp and defined shape in the background, except some of the white that I left. I still want it to be very atmospheric. Now, I never see myself painting something similar to Andrew Wyeth painting. First, because I never thought that I was able to do something that a master did. And second of all, it's not a subject that I usually paint because I don't really see that myself. Because I don't really live in an area that snows a lot. Seattle does snow once in a while, in a year, but never really snow much. But the recently, there was a huge snowstorm just covering the area with a lot of thick snow and it was very, very cold. So as I was walking through this walking trail that's near where I work, I started to see this transformation in the area that I live in. Things are covered by snow and a lot of visual noise, the grass, the rock and whatever, they just got covered by snow and just become so simple and so interesting and beautiful at the same time. So I decided to take a photo of it and decided to paint it and really want to capture this thing that I see in my eyes. So the second wash, I pre wetted the surface and I paint some soft shape in. And as I move to the left, I start to define the trees a little bit more. And I want to make sure I have quite a bit of mixtures in it because I do want the shape to be somewhat dark. Not too dark because I still want some depth. So as I get to the foreground with the dry tree and grass, I need them to be darker. However, for this painting, I do feel the background need to have a very strong shape as well, just because the composition and the overall subject for this painting. I think it is necessary that the background is not completely soft and light. It still needs some of a good contrast. One of the very important things for a very simple subject like this is the treatment of the shape and a brushstroke. The thing that will make this painting beautiful and delicate is to really pay attention to the shape that you are painting. The shape of the tree in the background, for example, you don't want to just paint it through and making a lot of repetitive mark. Even though there's a lot of tree branches and stuff, you really want to make some care to each and every single one of them. Every single brushstroke in this case should have a purpose. If you're just repeating the brushstroke, very, very soon the painting is going to look dead and not looking good and delicate. 
So I blow dry the background and I remove and peel off the masking fluid. So now you can see those clean shape of the tree against the dark background. It's also worth noting that while I blow dry, the thick background paint become a little bit drier. And before it's completely dry, I actually use a palette knife and scratch off some of the paint. And they become this interesting detail and highlight. So those will serve as some of the dry branches and dry bushes in the background, which will make the background feels a little bit more detailed and just some really interesting texture. But you need to make sure that your paint is dry enough and thick enough for you to scratch things off. Otherwise, if it is still very dry and you try to scratch it, all you're going to do is to scratch the paper and it's not going to leave the effect that you want. So here I try to finish up the background trees. It's very tedious because there's a lot of branches, but I really try to focus and really try to make each single brushstroke as not repetitive as possible. So it feels alive. It feels more natural. Now I'm starting to work on the pond. It's very important to understand the surface material quality of the pond. There's a thin layer of ice on top of the pond, except the middle part. And we need to understand the difference in order to have the convincing painting, to have a believable painting. So the ice on the pond, they are not as smooth as the water surface. So it's not as reflective. The reflection is there. You can see it under the tree. There's some dark reflection, but it's very diffused. It's not nearly as dark as the water. So I need to get that surface quality in to make it believable. That's why I pre-wet the surface and drop the dark paint in so the reflection will be very soft and faint. And I don't make the reflection too dark. So just by studying the photo, you also really need to study and analyze and look into the photo what makes the things look the way they are? Those are very important things you need to ask yourself. Don't just look at a photo and try to copy as is without understanding it. That's something that I told my students over and over again. You cannot try to paint and try to draw something you don't entirely understand. If you do that, your painting is not going to look believable because you actually don't really know and understand fully what you are painting. So now I'm painting the water surface in the middle, in the middle of the pond that is not frozen. There's no layer of ice on top. So this I need to make sure it is dark and the edge needs to be mostly sharp with a few exception of a little bit softer edges because the ice itself is a little bit thinner as it goes into the water because it starts to melt. So that's why there's a little bit of transition here and there. And that really subtle lost and found edges can really give a lot of quality to the painting. So the reflection on the eyes and some eyes are thinner, some part of the eyes are thicker. So the thinner eyes is more translucent to underneath and while the thicker eyes is wider and more diffuse so all the things that you understand about the image comes into play which is why also it's important that you can visit the place in person that will be better because you can see it with your own eyes and really experience the location so now i'm starting to work on the foreground the foreground is pretty much snow. And in this case, I try to make it as simple as possible. So I'm not going to paint a lot of texture on the snow, mostly just paint some of the dry grass and some of the dead branches that's half covered in snow, which is what makes this subject interesting because 
Even though most of the things are covered in the snow, there's still a few grasses, and there's still a few branches that's sticking out from the snow, and that makes things looking very interesting. So the background is mostly dry, and because the paper absorbed the paint, the background become a little bit too light. So I go back in, and I try to darken it just a little bit. I make sure it is completely dry. Then I go back and paint into it, and I soften the edge with clean water again. To know that is completely dry is very important. Otherwise, if you paint wet onto dry, but this layer is not completely dry, you are going to melt the paint, and it's gonna become messy and dirty. Now I started to paint the foreground dry bush and tree. It's a very interesting problem I need to solve because there's so much detail in it, and I'm not able to paint all of the really little nuances of light in the dark of the dry branches and trees. I need to use a lot of textures, dry brush mark, and so on. The paint actually needs to be quite thick and dark. Otherwise, as you can see, the underneath layer is going to show through. This also need to be dark enough for it to show the depths. It is in the foreground, so it should be a lot darker. So the background will get pushed back. Now here's the same trick I use the palette knife to scratch off some paint, which will give it a little bit of interesting texture and perceived detail. I also splatter some water on it just to give it a little bit more texture. And I see it's not dark enough, so I go back and darken it even more. And at that time, I saw that I will darken the water surface, and I'll have it connect to the foreground. So it'll be interesting of the shape connection there, which I think that will actually make the image more simple, and the shape will look even better. If you squint your eyes at the Reference photo, you actually see all the dark shape merged together. What I really did different is to actually make the background just a little bit lighter, so there will be a little bit more depth. But other than that, I try to be as faithful as I can to the photo. Not copy every single detail and shape exactly, but I really want to capture that feeling. Of the frozen pond, just that quietness, stillness of the scenery looks very cold and harsh, yet delicate and fragile. This painting is a huge learning experience for me, not in terms of painting technique because I am applying all that I know, but in terms of looking at an image and looking at a subject. This painting made me realize that. A lot of time we are drawn to a complicated scenery because it's interesting to look at. There's a lot of detail to look at. There's a lot of things that's happening. But this painting made me realize that sometimes a simple image like this, a simple subject like this, can be very emotional and powerful. Not every good painting and image has to be complicated. And it has to be a very majestic. It can be something very, very simple like this. There's just something very raw, very honest, very authentic about painting a simple scenery like this. I feel very fortunate that where I live, once in a while, there's just some amazing scenery that just happened like this. Even though the snow brought us a lot of inconvenience. It did bring us something very rare and precious scenery like this. By the time I'm recording this video, that scenery is all gone, and the snow is pretty much all melted right now. So I'm so glad that I was able to take that walk and capture that scenery and able to paint that in my painting, and just celebrate that rare time that we got a lot of snow and the pond got frozen. Just to celebrate what nature did to us and present to us, 
Thank you so much for watching this painting. I really enjoy painting this one. This painting is actually taken. So I hope that I get to paint more of this. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and share. Also comment down below and let me know if you enjoy the scenery compared to most of my usual painting of street scenery and portrait. Thank you and I will see you guys again very very soon.